Hi everyone, welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All Indiana Students, hosted by the Indiana Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. We're so glad that you've joined us. Please know that there is a Q&A button and that's where you can ask questions to the presenters. Um, your camera and microphone are off, so they're unable to hear or see you. Also, we wanted to let you know that there are tons of sessions available at inacac.org and this, this session will also be recorded and available in a week at the same website. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it along to the presenters. Thank you so much. Welcome everybody and good evening. My name is Alisa Tracy. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Grace College in Winona Lake, Indiana. And tonight we are talking about athletic opportunities at private colleges. So I'm very excited that you're all joining us and we have some experts here to join us on our panel to give you guys a sense of what you can experience at both Grace College, Marion University, and Goshen College. So we are gonna go ahead and kick it off, let you know a little bit about who we are and what our roles are at our school. So would each of you introduce yourselves, let the participants know what you do at your college. I will start us off. Hi, my name is Cassie Mackle. I am the Assistant Athletic Director at Marion University here in Indianapolis. Been here for about 13 years. Thank you so much, Cassie and Gershon College. Would you go ahead? Hi, my name is Dr. Erica Elbertine and I'm serving as the Interim Athletic Director. I'm also the Head Athletic Trainer here at Goshen and I've been here for five years. My first year is the Interim AD. Thank you so much. And my name is Marcus Moore. I am the Director of Athletic Admissions at Grace College. I have the fortune to work closely with Ms. Tracy, so. Yeah, and we definitely enjoy working with the athletic program here at Grace. And the reason why is because our athletic programs aren't just siloed into their own student experience. Athletic programs give an amazing culture to each campus. So. I know that most of you listening in tonight probably are athletes hoping to hear about the opportunities at your school, but being part of an athletic program at a college is much more than just playing your sport. So that's what we wanna talk about a little bit this evening. So my first question for all of you, and uh, I'll let you guys know when to chime in if you do have some questions so that you don't have to worry about talking over one another. But my first question for you is, would you describe your athletic program and what it brings to your campus culture? And Erica, do you wanna go ahead and start us off? Yeah, I'd love to, thanks. So at Goshen College here in Goshen, Indiana, we have 14 varsity sports. Uh, and so total, we have about 800 to 900 students, depending on the year, um, for the whole school. And so our athletic population is about 250 student athletes. So the thing that we just love about our student athletes here at Goshen is that they really do play a major role in leadership uh, for in the classroom, in the community, and in their playing competitions as well. So uh, at Goshen, we're the maple leaf. So you can see behind me our purple maple leaf that we love. Mainly that's just named after uh, the city of Goshen. So a lot of maple trees. Um, so in athletics, yeah, our 14 sports, seven for the females and seven for the males. Uh, and we compete in the Crossroads League, except for in men's volleyball, which is in the, in the WAC, or the Wolverine uh, Hoosier Athletic Conference. Thank you, Erica. Marcus, why don't you tell us a little bit about Grace? Yeah, we are also in the Crossroads League um, with Marion and Goshen. Um, similar schools, we have in addition to varsity sports, like many other schools, a lot of additional options for student athletes. Um, and we'll talk more about those, but different club sports and different JV sports and intramural opportunities. Um, the biggest thing about our culture at Grace, I think, is that uh, we have a lot of student involvement, especially at some of our larger events like basketball and soccer. Uh, when you have your students pretty involved in your athletics, it just creates a pretty special place in, in your campus feels like a community. Uh, we have a lot of added benefits. I know from professors that really push uh, kids to get out and support their peers. Uh, and we have wonderful support with our students. 
those who are not only involved in athletics, but those who are not. Uh, and I'd say we are also in Winona Lake, which is surrounded by a lake. So we do have some uh, additional water sports available, which is fun. Hopefully if you come to Grace, you get an opportunity to get out on a boat or a jet ski. If you don't, you'll definitely know a, a student that, that probably has one. So you'll have that opportunity if you get a chance, which is, which is an added benefit. Absolutely. And Cassie, go ahead and end us with this question with uh, information about Marion's athletic culture. So um, with Marion, we are, we have about close to 800 student athletes and we have about 26 varsity sports, which is a lot, ranging from the traditional sports that we have to rugby and lacrosse um, and cycling as well. Um, our culture is, um, our president is all about developing leaders. And so we try to cultivate a lot of leadership programs around that. We have a leadership conference in February that we usually do that we bring in some great speakers to try to help our athletes realize it's not just about winning. Um, it's also about um, developing great character um, student athletes to where they can go out in the world and make a difference. Um, one of the things that's unique that we really um, love is that we're sitting right outside about 10 minutes from downtown Indianapolis. And so our opportunities um, for internships and um, just getting involved with the community is, um, is great. So we really try to take advantage of that as soon as we can. Um, our students are great at supporting each other. As you know, that's a lot of student athletes. Um, so we try um, to push the, you know, trying to get there and support each other as much as we can, even though schedules are busy with each other. Um, so they try to get out there and help support their roommates, um, their suite mates, um, and potentially classmates. So um, leadership is huge for us and we try to make the best that we can while we're here for four years. I hope you guys heard a little bit about something that would interest you about being a student athlete at one of these schools. I know that I was not a college athlete. I was a high school athlete though. So something that was important to me in looking for colleges was a school that kind of helped me have the school spirit feel, a sense of togetherness and oneness. And I definitely got that at Grace. So I know that that's something that can be said about all the colleges that are here too. We're gonna dive a little bit deeper into some of the more specific things that they'll experience at your school. Uh, and as a reminder, as we're diving into some of this information for our listeners, you are welcome to use the Q&A feature. I am checking that. So I'll be able to ask some of those questions to our panelists and use that at the end as well. So feel free to use that throughout our presentation. But my next question for all of you are, uh, is what makes your athletic program and facilities unique at your college? Cassie, you want to go ahead and start us off? Sure, I think the one thing that makes us unique um, is we just renovated our physical education center. Um, we have a state of the art weight room, um, which is huge for athletes, as you know, to get in and out. Um, it's, it can accommodate a lot of teams currently. We're monitoring that, but um, we're able to squeeze in as many teams as we possibly can with all the great equipment that we have. Um, another great, um, I guess, uniqueness is um, that we have a turf field to where we can also accommodate our football and soccer teams. Um, they do share the facility, um, but it's turf. So as you know, in Indiana, the weather can change. So it's nice that we have that opportunity to be able to participate um, regardless of what the weather is like. Um, we also have close to us is um, the Indy Parks Velodrome. So we also have um, race tracking and cyclocross and um, for our cycling teams to be able to compete, which is huge because not very many um, places have an opportunity like that for their cycling teams. So um, those are just a couple few unique things about Marion Athletics. We all get that Indiana weather, so that's exciting to hear about. Erica, what about you in at Goshen College? What's unique about you guys? I would say for us, our small size is one of the most unique factors. So for me, I was a student athlete at another small school and a faith-based school as well. So here at Goshen, we're part of the Anabaptist Mennonite tradition, um, at least as far as like laying the foundations. So one of the keys that we're really working on is just being a diverse um, body of people. So accepting all and, and being excited about where we currently are in the world and learning a lot more about ourselves as student athletes as well. And so one of the things being a small school, we can have conversations about faith in class. We can also have conversations 
about our athletic events because a lot of the professors will know uh, what happened in the game last night or the event yesterday. Uh, and then we can also have our other, we'll talk more to you about intramurals, but right now we have uh, our vice presidents and our president are actually on an intramural volleyball team, which is really fun just to be able to compete against uh, some of the administrators and some of the other coaches too. So our small size allows us to uh, really be integrated in the classroom. And one of those experiences uh, that I'll just touch briefly on and then pass it off uh, is what's called SST or study service term. And so for some of our student athletes, uh, that's hard to go traveling across the world uh, for a semester or longer, but some of our teams have been able to go on trips together. And so they travel with a professor they do both the study and the service, uh, and it counts as part of their degree requ requirements. And so that's just something that's really unique about Goshen, that it's been one of the longest uh, international uh, academic programs in the country. And so we love to have our student athletes, our leaders to go on those trips and experience uh, life together. Amazing. You can definitely tell that the smaller size lends itself to some pretty special opportunities. That's amazing. Marcus, why don't you head, go ahead and uh, finish us off with what's unique about Grace College? Okay, uh, I would say our location for one, uh, we truly are, I think along with Goshen, are really at the crossroads. Um, although we're not a huge town, uh, we're two hours from Indianapolis, we're two and a half hours from Chicago, we're an hour from Notre Dame, we're 45 minutes from Fort Wayne. So um, I would say that Winona Lake is in fact, it's a lake town in the summer, it truly is that. And when the kids come back on campus, it then transforms to a college town. Uh, much of our campus makes up our community, which makes it special. And with that, um, we have about 30 to 35% of our, our students are varsity athletes. In addition, I mentioned previously that we have a lot of student involvement. And I know we'll get into the club and JV sports, but some form of club JV varsity sport that makes up about half of our student body. And even more so than that, about three fourths or 75% of our student body is doing some form of intramural sport. So we have a ton of student involvement, as I mentioned. I think it's pretty unique um, just because it gives kids an opportunity to get involved, uh, cheer on their, their, their classmates, their peers, all while staying fit and getting active and using the outdoors and going on the lake and whatever they have uh, at their disposal. So. That, uh, like Cassie mentioned as well, we have one of the best small college arenas in the entire Midwest, if you haven't had an opportunity to see it, that holds our chapels, our basketball, volleyball, and a lot of other events, as well as wonderful weight room facilities for not only varsity athletes, but all of our students. I think that's really important. You know, it's, it's not just a weight room. It is a workout, a true workout facility that students can use to take a break from studying or classes or midterms or whatever they need just as a stress relief, so. On the topic of fantastic facilities, I do want to encourage all of you to take a visit to these schools. And specifically, Grace does have an interactive virtual tour on our website. So you can see that arena and that facility that Marcus was talking about. Um, and Erica and Cassie might be able to, at the end, let you guys know what kind of follow-up You'd be able to do with their schools to get in touch with some of the things that they have to offer too. Let's talk about clubs, intramurals, and different athletic offerings. I know that a few, you guys have mentioned that a few times because athletics is not just varsity. There are a lot of other things that uh, our colleges provide. So tell me a little bit about your athletic offerings other than your varsity sports. Um, I'll go ahead and start. So we mentioned that we have varsity sports. Um, at this point, if you if you all are seniors, and I think if you're not being actively recruited, um, being a coach, and I know Cassie coached for a long time, um, you know, there are still opportunities. It may not be at the varsity level, especially there's probably a lot of you out there who really would like to continue on doing something in the athletic realm but you really don't wanna make it seem like that's your entire life. Academics is gonna be a big role for you guys moving forward in, in um, the next steps here. So uh, there are other opportunities. 
we are continuing to add club sports by the year. Um, we have a lot of interest and it's amazing some of the opportunities our kids have now. Esports is slowly becoming a big one for a, a lot of kids. We have a brand new state-of-the-art esports facility, which is really cool. It replaced my old office, so I was a little uh, I was a little burnt, but after I saw what they did with it, I was okay. It turned out pretty special, so we're really excited about that. We also have anything from bowling to bass fishing uh, to rugby. Um, we have trap and skeet shooting for those of you that like to shoot, uh, and all of these are continuing to grow in numbers. Uh, we have various water sports as well, so all of those club sports, I know at Grace, I'm sure at other areas, we do give scholarship money for. So if you don't want to have to go through the rigors of being a varsity athlete and having to practice two to three hours a day for eight to 10 months out of the year, um, and it feel like it kind of consumes a lot of your life uh, in your college years, we do have other opportunities for you to get involved and still receive scholarship money for that. Great, thank you. Erica, what about Goshen? What kind of offerings do you guys have aside from varsity? So we have a, a unique setting of our kinesiology department is close to our athletic administration office. And so we like to like always be encouraging just the holistic care for everyone. So everyone being physically active and getting in their exercise, but also just having that social aspect. So Goshen is not the biggest town but it does have some of the best bike paths around uh, and just being able to encourage our students to go outside to see some of those maple leaves, you know, outside, especially in the fall when it's just beautiful. Uh, and to be able to just make friendships doing these athletic activities. So for our intramurals, we do have the regular sports like the soccers and basketball or futsal. Um, we also have some more unique things like the uh, three hole golf course. So our campus athletic area is named after Dr. John Ingold, and he just loves golf. We don't have a golf team, but he decided that he would make his own three, uh, par three, I guess you call it, out in the, in the fields by the soccer field and such. And that's open to all of our students and to our community. So if you like golfing, maybe you can borrow the athletic training golf cart and go, go play a little quick round. Um, and then we just also have uh, some of the other general events, you know, of just competitions, you might see like kickball outside in the quads that we have or students playing spike ball. So just the student athletes, uh, you see them around, but you also see that in the intramurals and the club sports too. So it's just a good time to really take care of yourself at a physical, physical level. Great. And Cassie, what about Marion? So um, besides our varsity sports, some of the JV sports that we do have that we do offer scholarship for um, that doesn't like what Marcus was saying may not um, take as much time as what a varsity um, athlete may have, um, but it is some sort of competitive nature um, would be we have JV baseball and we have um, men and women's soccer and we also have wrestling. Um, so those are our JV sports that we currently have. We do have club sports. Um, such as game day cheer. Um, it's totally different than our competitive cheer where they're competing um, for a title. And this is just specifically on football and basketball game days. Um, they as well receive some sort of scholarship um, for their time. And um, we also have a dance team and they also perform at our football and basketball um, events as well. Some of our intramural sports that we have, um, currently it is being run by some of our coaches so you'll get that interaction with our coaches, even if you're not on a varsity team. Um, but some of those sports are flag football, we have basketball, like the more traditional intramural sports that we have. Um, we also have volleyball that we do. Um, they were doing cornhole and kickball at some point. Um, so I know right now with everything going on, it's a little bit different, but they're trying to make the best of it that they possibly can. Um, so those are kind of our, our different things that we offer um, from a non-varsity aspect. Great. That helps us understand all of the opportunities that a student would have at your college if they're not being actively recruited right now as a senior, or if they're saying, look, varsity might be a little bit too much for me. I think I still want to be involved with my sport, but at what other level can I do that? So feel free to, in this next question, add any other club, JV, or intramural sports that come to mind to let our listeners know some more specific opportunities that they can get involved in. 
but uh, throwing a, a curveball at you guys, I want to ask you what uh, sport team are you most excited about this year, whether it's a varsity club, JV, or intramural? So what are you most excited for and why? And that'll give our listeners a little, a little uh, peek into what's going on at our colleges this year. Erica, go ahead and get us started. I feel like you're kind of putting me on the spot here as like the, you know, interim AD. I don't think I can even <laughs> say one favorite, but uh, something that I think is, is really cool is just the opportunity to be able to play athletics right now. And so we're actually hosting Marion soccer uh, just like in an hour here. So coming right up and I'm just really excited to be able to see people out and about and doing things. It might look a little bit differently with the pandemic. So maybe wearing a lot more of the face coverings or neck gaiters. Um, but yeah, I'm just really excited that we can all be back together. I think that it's been in the NAI, like a huge blessing that we can do that, that we can have these competitions, uh, that we can bring our teams together. And we're trying to do that as best we can and as safe as possible and keeping just that health and safety a number one priority for this year. So it might not look like a normal year, but we still do get to compete. And so that for me is really exciting that our students can have that opportunity. Wonderful. Cassie, go ahead and let us know, what sport are you most excited about this year? Well, my husband's the men's tennis coach, so I probably should say men's tennis, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm like Erica, I'm just excited about all of them playing. Um, our volleyball team won the national championship last year. So I'm excited to see what they do um, coming up with the conference tournament later on in the fall. Um, our women's soccer team was um, a semi where they were the runners up in the national tournament last year. So we're excited to see them and football as well. They were runners up. And then when we got COVID interrupted last uh, spring, we had some good teams with basketball and softball and baseball. So I'm just kind of really excited to see how they all progress throughout the year. But, you know, coming from the wife's standpoint, it should be men's tennis. Um, but, you know, with all the ones that have done so well, I'll say volleyball, women's soccer, and football. Awesome. Now, you had an obligation. It's okay. We understand. <laughs> Marcus, let us know what's going on at Grace this year. Well, again, selfishly, women's tennis is my favorite sport because that's what I coach. So... I will go out on a limb and say that. In addition to that, my twin is the head basketball coach at Grace. So in basketball, we come from a family of basketball coaches. So that is definitely towards the top of my list. Outside of those, honestly, I referee a lot of our intramural sports and those are hands down the most enjoyable for me to watch. I'm most excited when kids are struggling because uh, they've studied their brains off and they just need to release a, a packed house inside of our rec center playing volleyball or basketball or whatever it is going on for those two or three weeks. It's really cool to see how our students engage, especially build that camaraderie because our, our, our intramural teams are based on your, your dorm in your hall and just to kind of see that. And when I was at Grace, that was a big deal for us. You know, and we were outside of tennis and basketball for our sports. We really got to build some pretty special bonds that exist today based on some of the intramural sports that we were able to play together. Um, so, I, again, like the girls said, I'm excited that our conference is back at it, though. It's, it's great to see kids compete and do it safely, uh, but to see them back on the court is pretty special. Yeah, definitely is for me too. You know, watching from afar and just being a fan, it is exciting to be able to see things happening on campus and the students getting to participate in the way that they've trained for for so many years. So that's really exciting. All right, as we're finishing up our panel time and then transitioning on to Q&A, I'd love for you to share what should these students do next? I want to get involved in an athletic opportunity, whether that's varsity, JV club, what do I do next? Marcus, go ahead and get us started. Yeah. Well, the easiest one for Grace is to contact me. I know there are a handful of colleges that have um, athletic admission recruiting coordinators specific for this that can kind of push you in the right direction, albeit varsity sports 
or those club, JV, intramural type stuff. So we're kind of the mediators. It's kind of what our job and responsibilities are. Outside of that, reaching out to your athletic directors of schools that you're interested in, because they can definitely point you in the right direction. Um, I will say that depending on how serious you are, the more stuff that you can give and present, the better off that you are, um, the higher the level that you'd like to, to do. And what I mean by that is, if you want to play a JV varsity type role, you probably need to have some film uh, or some stuff that they can actually see. Otherwise, if you're interested in that club sport, I know at Grace, our numbers are growing. And if you have an interest, we'll take you. We'll take you. Um, and, and intramurals is for everybody. So there's really avenues for everything. But I would say to, to look in the athletic department uh, on websites and see if you can't find a coordinator of some sort. And if you, if you strike out there, reach out to the athletic directors because they'll put you in the right spot. Cassie from Marion University, what should a student do? Mark has pretty much covered it. Um, coming when I used to coach, it was, you know, send as much as you can to that coach if you're really interested in being a varsity athlete. Um, make sure they have everything that they need in that one email. I would say create a sports resume. You know, put your highlights. Um, you know, for tennis, when I coached tennis, it was, you know, I want to see a full match. Don't just give me the highlights. I want to see the good and the bad because I want to be able to see the true you. Um, and so I would say create that um, hot that resume and email all to that coach. You got one shot to make it count. So send that email with all the information that they could possibly need, academic information, athletic information, also community involvement. I think that's important for coaches to see as well. Um, if you're looking at, um, sometimes if you're a senior and you're like, eh, I'm not really sure about the varsity level, that might be a little too intense for me. Sometimes um, teams also have manager positions. So reach out to those sports as well. Um, reach out to that head coach and maybe copy that assistant coach if their information is on the website and be like, hey, I know you're probably not interested in me as a varsity athlete. Maybe I don't, maybe I don't want that kind of commitment, but I want to be involved. Do you have a managing spot open? Um, ask, ask them to see what would happen. Maybe they do have something available for you to be involved with. If you love sports, um, but you, you know, all kinds of different sports, usually in athletics, there are jobs as well available. Like at Marion, we also have, you know, you work with our sports information, you can work with statistics, you can do video, but it doesn't involve all of the day-to-day um, -day stuff of teams, but you can help out and be a part of it. Um, so I would say definitely if you're, if you're interested in the varsity aspect, you've got a one-shot email deal, send your, send your resume, send your video film. Um, if you're looking just kind of to get involved, um, Marcus said, you know, look at the website. Um, like for Marion, we have one email for general questions. Send it to there, send it to the athletic director. They can help direct you to where you need to go. Wonderful advice. That's awesome. Erica, anything to add? I think the only thing, I mean, Marcus and Cassie, you covered it really well. The only thing I would just add or encourage is just to not be afraid to like put yourself out there and reach out to all of the people that you want to uh, and just try to get those yeses, whether that is a varsity um, experience or intramurals, but kind of putting your research in, whether that's following on social media or other websites or kind of in the day and age of the virtual. And so just starting here with the webinar is a great first step, um, but being able to kind of reach outside your comfort zone uh, to try and get to meet new people, uh, meet new student athletes when you go on these, these tours for the colleges. Uh, I think all of us do that and, and love to see, you know, the recruits on campus and, and love to see the prospective students on campus too. So just going to those websites and, and reaching out as well. Yeah, I can second that from an admissions perspective. I have a lot of students reaching out to me saying, hey, I'm interested in basketball. I'm interested in volleyball. What do I do? I've already emailed the coach, but I'm going to email you too. <laughs> and that's the way to do it. Put a bug in our ear. Uh, let us know that you're interested. We, and we want to advocate for you to find the best athletic fit. And if there's anything that you guys take away from this webinar tonight, it's just to know that there are a myriad of opportunities at each school that you could take. You don't have to pigeonhole yourself into one if you're still deciding what is going to be the best fit for you. 
So next steps are go on these websites, check out the athletic offering and send an email out there, send a text, give us a call, let us know what you're interested in. We'll invite you to our campus so that you can find the best fit. So I wanna open it up to listener questions now. Uh, feel free to use the Q&A box. I will be catching all of those questions and serving them to our athletic representatives tonight. But what questions do you have about Marion University, Grace College, and Goshen College athletic programs? Well, no worries, as you guys are warming up, I have another question for you. How would you say you support your athletes in balancing their college life? Because every athlete is a student too. So what does it like, look like to be a student athlete and balance those two responsibilities at your colleges? And Cassie, go ahead and start us off. I know one of the things our coaches um, try to do is also to help make the student a priority, which means like they'll do, they'll offer study tables um, for their students that may need that little extra um, structure or support um, to make sure that they're blocking off time um, for their academics. As you know, that's, that's where the importance is. Um, winning championships is great, but we want you to be successful in the classroom and to get jobs and, and to be a contributor later on. So um, our, our coaches do do study tables. Our, um, Mr. Downing also, our athletic director, also goes and monitors our study tables. Um, so it's pretty um, neat that he does that as well. So that's one of the things that we do. Awesome. Marcus, what about you at Grace? How do you help your student athletes be good students and good athletes? Well, outside of that, I think just opportunities. Um, you know, I know Goshen, Marion, all of us have opportunities for athletes, even in the career field, outside of academics and athletics in connecting you with the right people uh, to possibly pers pursue options uh, continuing on. Um, that's what athletics does. It's, it's a great platform and it opens a lot of doors. And I think regardless if you're a stud varsity athlete or you're the manager for a team, all of you have an opportunity in a realm to connect and continue to pursue something in athletics moving forward. Maybe that's physical therapy and connecting with OPS or a place like that. I know all three of our schools have those opportunities. So I think further on, athletics is a great way to open the door to some possible career fields in the future. Uh, and I think all three of our schools would present that to our kids and help assist them in any way possible. Yeah, absolutely. College is not just about getting A's, obviously. It's about having that future plan set up and making those connections and using your athletic platform to do that is a really great tip. I know coming from Grace, we do stand out as scholar athletes. I think that 3.4 is the latest average GPA of all of our athletes at Grace. So you know you guys are going to be taken care of academically and in your career too if you're an athlete at any of these schools. So Erica, let us know what it looks like to kind of balance that uh, college life, career vision, while also being an athlete and being present on the teams at Goshen. So I think I've always said that the athletic realm is one of the best learning labs. So you're learning all different skills, like both your soft skills that a lot of the employers are looking for, uh, and then also just general skills as well. And so at Goshen, uh, we really do try to build into the student athletes and uh, kind of similar to Marion, doing some study tables as necessary. Uh, also, the coaches, like since it's such a small school, uh, they walk around and see the different classrooms, connect with the professors, and we can have that like small, um, or we have that relationship to be able to, you know, if there is a problem, then we can start talking about it and try to find the solutions. Uh, and so many of our coaches are also instructors, whether that's in like wellness or in our first year courses. And so that's just a really uh, a different opportunity to get to know 
the athletes and get to know the people that are in intramurals as well. Uh, and so with that, yeah, that's, that's what we do at Goshen. Incredible. I love that integration. That's awesome. I've heard that theme a couple of times during the panel. Great. Well, we'll leave just a couple minutes to see if any questions pop up, but I do have some final questions to end us off too. So any questions from our listeners for our panelists today? All right, well, question for you guys. Why should a student athlete attend your school? Erica, go ahead and start us off. Wow, I feel like this one's like probably the most pressure of the whole night. So <laughs> yeah, I think for Goshen College, having our student athletes here to be able to be leaders, uh, both in life and leadership and service. So that's kind of the Goshen motto a culture for service. So I talked earlier about the study service term um, and about having some of our athletes be able to go um, out into the world and learn, but then also be able to bring back their experiences to our athletic competitions. So for us, if you get to, uh, or if you choose to come to Goshen College and be able to connect in the classroom, uh, in the community and in the competitions, and I think that really everyone can make a difference here. We're so small that you won't be missed. So you'll get to know people and people will get to know you and you can just, the opportunities are endless. Thank you so much. Very exciting. All right, Marcus, why should a student athlete attend Grace? I think if you're looking for a true college town, a sense of community, um, a beautiful setting right on the water with a place that has a lot of festivals and art shows and just constantly stuff going on, um, Grace would be a really great fit. And I think outside of that, I think just the opportunities that we have for any form of athletes, whether it be JV club, varsity, any level, not only during your four years at Grace, but your future. We are the orthopedic capital of the world in Warsaw, Indiana. Um, so we do have a lot of students that continue on, athletes specifically, that will work at Zimmer Biomet in Depew, work in athletics and orthopedics and have those job opportunities. So kind of just the whole realm of that, I think, is, is what makes us unique and a special place. Yeah, it's definitely a very holistic experience. We want you to grow as an athlete, but also as a student as well. So yeah, I've seen that at Grace too. Cassie, go ahead and finish this off. Why should a student attend Marion University? I mean, what I would say is if you're looking for a small college um, in, a, in a city, um, we're probably a good fit for you. Um, we have great opportunities to where you can have that relationship, that one-on-one -on -one with professors and also have the opportunity just like Goshen and Grace to compete at a collegiate level and at a national level. Um, but you also get that opportunity to make um, connections and network in a large city to where you can intern and work. Nurses can work at a variety of hospitals. Um, you know, right now, a lot of it is, is med, we also have a med school. So that's also a great opportunity. Um, but for us, we are a small college um, in a big city. Um, so it's a little bit different than Goshen and Grace, but it's it's depending on what your fit is, what you're really looking for in a college and university. Um, so that's what my pitch would be. That's great. And you, you said it well, it depends on what your fit is. And that's why the three of us are together today is because we all are in kind of a similar spot in regards to our athletic league, but we're all different in our college experience and our offerings. So it's about what the best fit is for you. And that's the college search in a nutshell is what is going to be your best fit. So my recommendation for all of you as we wrap up today is go online and check out the athletic offerings at Grace, Goshen, and Marion. See what would be a good fit for you and set up a visit. Visits are the best way to experience what a college has to offer, 
And just by a nod of head, I know that Grace is, but Goshen and Marin, are you guys open for in-person visits this fall for prospective students? Okay, perfect. So we are open. We want to see you. We want to see you play. We want to find an opportunity for you. So go ahead and go to our websites and schedule a visit. I also want to let you know that most likely, I know I can speak for Grace, um, but next in the next two weeks, there are going to be information sessions specifically about each college. So you'll get to sit in and hear more about Grace Goshen and Marion and know who we are as a school holistically and what you should do next in the admissions process. So I hope that you look at the list of offerings there and join us for our next sessions. But before we close today, are there any last questions from our listeners that I can ask for us? All right. Well, thank you so much, Cassie, Erica, and Marcus for joining us this evening. We will wrap up here. If you do have any other questions, please reach out to us. We are here to help and we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks so much. Thank you again for joining. After this window closes, a brief survey will appear on your screen. We would appreciate your feedback. And just another reminder, there are multiple sessions happening over the course of the next few weeks, and those sessions can be found at inacac.org. The recording of this evening's session can be found on the same website along with all other sessions. So again, thank you for joining and hope you have a great night.